A few days ago, I've uploaded here on YouTube my version of Bach's Prelude and Fugue in F sharp major of the first book of the Well Tempered Clavier. The Prelude has a rather unusual time signature of 1216. Why did Bach choose 1216 and not, for instance, the much more common 128 as he, for instance, did in his Prelude in E major? Let's try to shed some light here. So what's up everybody, my name is Wim Winters and welcome to Authentic Sound. This channel is all about exploring the music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond with a single goal to inspire you on your journey as a musician or as a music lover. You might have expected me to be at a clavichord instead of my Erar piano, but the principles of interpretation are basically the same whether you play the clavichord, the harpsichord or the piano. The reason I'm sitting here is simply because I'll be recording some videos at my ERAR today and carrying around with all lights, cameras, microphones is, well, something that will keep you busy for a while. Don't tell anyone, by the way, all this is set to record the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. So yes, time signatures are always important as one of the tempo indicators for a composition. In Bach's time especially, since the use of Italian tempo words such as Allegro, Andante, Presto, they do occur from time to time, but compared to later music by Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, not so often. I will upload a video soon talking on basic principles and how Bach often clearly indicated the tempo he wanted you to play in. But for now, Let's focus on the reasons he might have had for choosing 12-16 instead of the also back then more common 12-8. 12-8 indeed is a time signature he could have used easily. If you double the note values in the prelude in F sharp major, you would come up with the normal 12-8 pattern. The basic tempo, the tempo ordinario for the two versions, one the F sharp major based on 16th note basic pulse, hence the 12 16 and E major based on an 8 note pulse. They, the tempo ordinario does not really differ, so that was not the reason. But if we look on a more detailed level, we see in the F sharp prelude a rhythmical progression and overall playfulness that in a way is more focused on the 16th note than compared to the A major. In the E major, the eight notes seems to be more connected to each other, more legato, leading the listener from one first note of a group of three to a next one. But be sure not to play these notes like triplets. There you already have a tempo guide. If you hear triplets instead of eight notes, you're playing simply too fast. This way of connecting does happen in a similar way in the F sharp major palette at the beginning, but it soon changes. Look what happens already in bar two in the right hand. There we see the start of syncopations that will set true throughout the whole piece and are an important expressive element to build the joyful character of this piece. One feels more a kind of hopping so to say, in the F sharp major, whereas the E major resembles more leaves blowing in the wind. For sure, this leads to a more articulated performance. One of the major reasons, I believe, Bach went for this 12 16 So, the 12 16 invites the player to think more on the detailed level of the 16th note, thereby emphasizing more if only by looking on the score the tiny micro-articulations and phrasings. When Bach would have used a 12-8 structure, the chances might be there that an experienced musician came to a similar result, but playing more legato, perhaps. See it as a photo camera. 12-8 has a wider angle lens than 12-16. We zoom in here. Bach lives in a time where time signatures will be simplified a lot in 1756, Leopold Mozart advocates to abolish a lot of the, what he called, old time signatures. That happened fairly quickly, at the same time with the race of the Italian tempo words. Those tempo words did not save music from confusion. 
reason why composers a little later would call for devices that gave absolute time. It's just a little jump to the era of the metronome then. So just a quick video here to give you some insight and a question many of you might have had for a long time. And I said I'll be making that video on basic principles and reconstructing Bach's tempo from his notation soon. Stay tuned for new videos if you don't want to miss that. No better way than to subscribe to this channel, hit also that bell icon next to the subscription button and then we'll see each other very soon again. Bye.